My name is Mark Hegren. I'm head of technical service automotive coatings, and I'd like to give you today an insight how surface treated nanoparticles can improve the performance of modern coating systems. Um, for many new developments, sustainability is a key driver because energy consumption, CO2 footprint, these are really important topics which you have to focus on when you develop new systems. And one possibility to lower the energy consumption is, for example, alternative paint systems like low bake systems, which are cured at 60, 80, 100 degree, degree instead of 140 degree, or also UV systems, which are cured very quick just with some UV light. But both kind of systems struggle a bit with the scratch resistance. On the low bake systems, we have a shorter curing time so that it takes longer time to have the full cross-linking of this paint system. And UV systems usually very brittle, a brittle so that you struggle here with the scratch resistance. Um, during my presentation, I will give you an insight how different surface modification can be a very useful driver to overcome these challenges. So why we, sele we selected nanoparticles to improve the scratch resistance? So there are three key facts how this nanoparticle performs. On one hand side, we're working usually with silicium oxide or aluminium oxide pigments. So these are very hard particles. On the other side, we work with very small particles, so with nanobase particles. As you can see here in the cube, um, let's assume that we bring in particles which have one micron size. We would have just 40 particles when we assume we bring in 2% of the particles. But if we work with nanoparticles, we would bring in 5 million particles. And I'm very sure you can understand that 5 million particles can bring much more benefit in the paint system except for, uh, compared to 40 particles, except maybe this particle is so big that you can see them as seeds in your paint system. The third driver for this nanoparticle is that we work with material which are almost transparent in clear coat systems because they have a very similar refraction index compared to the resin system. So let's have a look what we are doing with these particles. Um, we have here a nanoparticle. And now it's in, not important if it's silica based or aluminum oxide based, but the most products we are talking today are silica based material. First, we have to bring them in a step so that they're stable in the uh, delivery form and also in your paint system. So that's why we bring in polymeric wetting dispersing additives, which keep the particles stable in your paint system. So this article now. I uh, have a bit different polarity in your paint system. So that means you get a gradient of cross-linking in your system so that you get a certain elasticity in your paint system that you get a bounce effect. But when you run or when we did examples and tests, we saw that you need very high amount of this nanoparticles to get an effect in the paint system. Yeah, so this silica modification improves the efficiency in the system that you get can get a much better benefit at lower dosages. Here in this video, you can see a rough idea how this bounce effect work. So there are the particles in the systems, lowers the cross-linking density, increase the elasticity without impacting the hardness sufficiently. So that means if you now have a force which creates a scratch, the system will bounce back so that the scratch will be not so visible after yeah, the, the scratch. But we saw that in UV system, maybe we have to work with a different mechanism. So that's why we developed the additive four here in this uh, test. And here we don't work with silicon treatment. So here we bring in unsaturated uh, acrylate groups on the surface of the pigment. So that means on one hand side, the particle will be not bonded itself 
in the resin, but due to the anchoring groups on the surface, we have a significant increase of the hardness of the paint system. With the additive five and six in our test series, we combined both performance of the silicon treated one and the UV reactive modified surfaces in one structure. So we bring in on one hand the silicon and we bring in also the reactive groups so that we can get also a significant increase of the hardness, but also this improved elasticity by the silicon chains. So we have now totally six additives we will compare in this low bake system and in a 100% UV system afterwards. The additive one is just a stabilized nanoparticle without additional surface treatment. In case of additive two and three, we have products which have a silicon modification. The modification two is a little bit less active, while the additive three have a more active silicon in or on the surface. Additive four is just acrylic cross-linkable, so we have the unsettled groups on the surface. And additive five and six have a combination of acrylic, unsettled acrylic groups and silicon, while the additive five is delivered in solvent and additive six is delivered in reactive thinner. So if we have now a look on the performance on the low bake automotive clear coat, and we just have a look on the gloss retention by crop meter test. So we measure the dry scratch resistance by 10 times uh, scratching with a special paper on the surface. And afterwards, we measure the gloss retention. And here you see very easily that the additive without surface treatment, um, but also enormous silicone at the control doesn't give you any gloss retention. But especially with the additive two, we can achieve at a certain dosage a very nice improvement of the dry scratch resistance, so over 80%. And also at lower dosages, we see already significant improve. Interesting is that additive three and two are exactly the same nanoparticles, and the difference is just the silicon modification. When we have a look, on the COF, so the coefficient of friction, the surface slip, um, you also see that even the additive five, for example, contains some silicon, that this silicon have no significant impact on the surface slip. Here, really just the additive three, which contains the more active silicon, offers slip properties which are quite similar to a medium active silicon, while in all other cases, the silicon modification is not so dominating that we get surface slip. When we measure the surface tension, you see a quite similar picture like you saw with the surface slip. Here also the additive structure three with a more active silicon lowers the surface tension, quite similar to the medium active silicon while especially the additive five and one uh, have no impact on the surface tension and the modification of the additive two lowers a bit the surface tension, but by far not so efficient compared to the additive three. If you now have a look into a 100% UV system, so completely different cross-linking mechanism, so a much more bristle system, and we also measure here the gloss retention by crop meter. Um, you see a bit different picture. The additive uh, two and three, which works very sufficient in the two pack PU low bake system, also can provide certain scratch resistance, especially at lower dosages. But you see as soon higher dosages of the additives are used, you see much more sufficient performance in terms of gloss retention, so over 90% when you use a structure which bring in the elasticity and the hardness in the system like additive five and six. And you also don't see a big difference if the additive was used in the delivery form as a solvent or acrylic, um, acrylic um, reactive thinner. 
Um, so here the performance are very similar. When you see you have a look on the COF, here also especially the silicon and acrylate modified samples will not provide much slip. There is at higher dosage, you see a bit impact, especially compared to the additive four, where there's no, no silicon in. But similar to the solvent bond PU system, you see that the additive structure three is much more sufficient to give surface slip. Um, but also the additive two, even the silicon is a bit less active, can provide in this kind of systems surface slip. Interesting for the UV system is also the abrasion resistance here tested with a table abrasion tester. And as lower the loss of weight, as better the scratch resistance of the coating. And here it's really easy to see that there is a significant improvement by this acrylic functionality of the additive four. So for that application, there would be no need <coughs> to have this silicon modification in like an additive five or six. But interesting is also that an additive two at the higher dosage performs very, very well for the scratch resistance. Why is the additive three, where we have again the same nanoparticle, but the different modifications and performance are not so satisfying. Also, an interesting phenomena is what you can achieve with the surface treated uh, nanoparticles is that when you apply on very flexible substrates this the UV coating that you can get by far better anti-curling properties. This curling means the difference between the foil with or without coating. Or here in that example, you see on the picture, once a coating without the nanoparticles, where you have a very strong curling, so the film lift up a lot, and the additive five, where the additive prevents the curling. This science shows also that you have less tension in the paint system. And here it really very useful additive if you want to coat flexible materials. So with this surface treated nanoparticles, we offer a very useful tool to optimize the performance of modern coating systems, which are more and more developed to achieve the sustain, sub sustainability goals for the silicon treatment of this particle helps a lot to increase the elasticity of your paint system without impacting significantly the hardness of the system, while the unsettled acrylic groups are able to give more hardness to your paint system to resist also by that one. And the very big advantage of this tool of, or this group of additive is that we have liquid additives, which you can easily add while steering to your paint system. So you don't have to handle any, pow any powder or dusty material. <laughs>